Okay, <clears throat> what I want you to do is go back to the page with the chart on it. Page 223, and I told you we would get to the other half, the general lean. The general lien attaches to personal and real property as well. That's the key to this one. It attaches to everything. So the general lien goes on real and personal property. And I told you sometimes it's called in persona because it's against the person. It is always involuntary. That's the only kind there is. It is put on you by a judge. Hence the word judgment. Anybody been to a small claims court? Don't raise your hand. And had a judgment put on you? That's where this is coming from. It's against your person and all of your real and personal property. So it goes against things like you, your house, your car, your kids, your Frisbee, your silverware, all right? Technically. Now, legally, we can't do that because you can't sell your kids. You can't. Um, so what we do is we put it on things that have titles that we can track like your airplanes, your boats, your motorcycles, RVs, cars, lake property, vacant land, your house, and my body. All right? It attaches to all of the stuff. So now if you get a judgment and they run your DMV record, they're going to go, hey, there's a judgment against this. There's a lien on this car. The judgment comes in the flavor of what? Equitable and statutory. Equitable would be the judgment based on the judge. Statutory would be a law, which actually the best one of those is the inheritance tax. The inheritance tax is a rule that comes to you or the estate tax. There's a rule that says you pay so much. So let's talk about how a judgment would work. I don't want to pick on anybody in this room because, well, let's pick on Kim. No, I'll just take it back. I have an English bulldog, very expensive dog. One of you guys hit and killed my dog. So I'm going to take you to court and sue you. The very first thing I'm going to do is this thing called a Liz Pendon. A Liz Pendon's on page 230. We've talked about this just briefly earlier, and I told you a Liz Pendon is a future lawsuit. It means litigation pending. It's a future interest in a lien. And what's a lien? It's a future ownership. So this is a future interest in a future ownership. I think I'm lost. It's a future of a future. It's like putting instant coffee in the microwave. You actually go back in time. Never mind. <clears throat> you guys ever flown to St. Louis? You realize you get there two minutes before you leave? You leave at 7 o'clock in the morning, you, you arrive at 6.58. You get there two minutes before you leave. I actually left my toothbrush once. When I got there, I called home and reminded me to bring my toothbrush. It must have worked because when I got to the hotel, my toothbrush was in there. <laughs> Never mind. That's what I'm working on. Well, it still needs some work, obviously. <laughs> it's work in progress. Hey, they all can't be gems. So before I actually let you find out that I'm suing you, I'm going to hire an attorney who is going to file a Liz Pendon. Means a litigation pending against you. So now, all of a sudden, you try and start selling off your assets so that you aren't going to pay me. All of the BMV, the title company, the court system are going to show up. Hey, wait a minute. There's a lawsuit pending, potentially, with this Raymond Modulin dude. We cannot let you sell your car 
you've got to get this Liz Pendon settled up before you can transfer the title legally, all right? Same with your boat, your airplane, all of that. So now you go to court and the judge finds in my favor for the amount of 10 grand, those Liz Pendens now become an attachment to your property. I am now attached to everything you own as that new lien. So you had a house, remember that was your house with 100 grand as a first and a 50 as a second. Now you've got me as a third for 10 grand, which really it's not a big deal because you're not going to sell and I'm out of the money anyway because it's worth 150. I'm now the third in line for 10,000, right? Just replace me with that HVAC thing, you understand. But wait, there's more. You got a free and clear sweet Camaro from 1978 that's free and clear. It now has a $10,000 lien on it from me. And your airplane, which is worth 1.4 million, you now has a $10,000 airplane on it. A $10,000 lien on it. So I attach to everything that you own that we track. Technically, yes, if you sold a Frisbee, I could go, wait a minute, that's my money, but we can't track all that stuff. So just the things we track, mobile homes, real estate, cars, airplanes, boats. All because you hit my dog and I want a court suit and got a judgment against you. You could have just done that, but you argued it and said it wasn't your fault. My dumb dog ran in your way. I won the court case. Even after I win, yeah, you got to pay me off some way. Yeah, you could come to me and go, I want to pay you off. You pay me my 10 grand, off, then I give you a release of lien, and now once again, you got the lien and the release. That's the whole where we're going with this. All right? You could have paid me off before we went to court, we wouldn't have to go to court. But no, you said it wasn't your fault. The other thing is, once we go to court and he says, no, Raymond, it wasn't their fault, now all those Liz pendants go away and now you're free and clear to, to do what you want to do. All right? They don't become a judgment because I lost. That's the other thing that could happen. But here's what the kicker is. I told you it goes against you. Not only does it block you from selling, it could also block you from buying. And this is what happens with real estate a lot of times. So what happens is you now have this judgment of 10 grand to me that's blocked all your Camaro and your boat and your house and all that. And you want to go out and buy a new Corvette and you say, hey, I want to buy one of these $70,000 Corvettes. And GMAC says, okay, we'll finance you. Oh, wait a minute, you lost a court suit and have a judgment against your person for 10 grand, which would be before the loan for the Corvette. That would make our loan for the Corvette second, and we would be out of the money. We're not going to let you borrow the money to buy the Corvette. So not only have I blocked everything from selling, I blocked you from buying. And that has happened on houses where the buyer coming in has a judgment against them, and the lender's like, I'm not loaning you money. We would not be first. This judgment against your person that you lost to this Raymond dude for a dog three years ago is still on your record. It would be first, then us. So you cannot buy a house because you've got this lien against your person. You've got to solve this problem. I get my money. So it not only blocks the sale of your property and all your other stuff, it also blocks the purchase down the road where you can't do it. Now you got to come to me and go, hey, I need to settle up and pay you off. Do that and I'll sign the releases and you can go record it and all the releases go away, the attachment goes away, the judgment goes away and all of that. Cool? So it's called a writ of attachment. Uh, the statutory is the estate or inheritance tax. There are some other liens that you guys will get to or see. Uh, water lien, very common, a municipal water lien. They're the only ones that lien the property. If you're a landlord, make sure your tenant's paying the water bill because if they're not, they're going to put a lien on your property, not necessarily the person. 
Yeah, well, and sewer in Marion County is water and sewer, same thing. All right. There is what they call a bail bond lien. Ask my brother about this one. No, I'm just kidding. If I need to bail somebody out, I could borrow money against my house, use my house as the collateral to get the money to bail someone out. The bail bond would put a lien on your property, and they would be just like that first, the second, and the third's the bail bond lien. Now, he's going to have to see money there. In the example I gave you just a minute ago, where I've got 150 and my house is worth 150, he wouldn't loan me 10 grand because his lien is out of the money. All right, so there has to be some equity in your house to do that for this particular situation. Um, IRS lien, if you fail to pay your uh, personal taxes. How do you think the IRS plays the game? Believe it or not, the IRA, IRS plays fair. They actually fall in line like they're supposed to. You would assume that since the state taxes wiped everybody out, that the federal would be a bigger bully. They're actually not. They would actually file in line third or fourth position. Now, they are much quicker to get to their money and force issues, but they don't wipe everybody else off. So if you're having a debate as to pay your federal income taxes or your state real estate taxes, I'd go pay my state real estate taxes first. That's just my opinion. They're going to be taking your property sooner. Any questions about liens? Specific and general. Specific only is real property. General is real and personal. Specific comes in voluntary, involuntary, and vendors, where the general is only involuntary. And they all have an equitable or a statutory portion, except the very first one, because there's no such thing as a statutory voluntary law. All right? So it's the only one that has equitable. Other than that, all the others in that chart are equitable and statutory rule. Understand the words subordination. Make sure you understand that date is equal to priority. Unless the subordination is there, then they swap. And we record by date. First one in gets first recording. When you pay off, you pay off by priority. All right? Any questions? Have a good day.